Hello, Vibers, and welcome to the Vibe with Kai podcast. It's your boy, Kai, and I'm so excited to be sitting here with TikToker and my friend, somebody who has one of the most inspiring stories that I have ever heard uh, on, on this app. I'm super excited to have my new friend, Cass Mastropalo, here today. Super excited. What's going on, man? It's so nice to see you. It's nice. It's nice to see you, too. Thank yeah, you. man. Absolutely. Yeah really appreciate it absolutely no honestly thank you and and for those of you that don't know um Cass was was born in in some of the poorest areas of, of Haiti and when he when he was young he and his brother were captured by slave owners and became you know correct me if I'm wrong if I'm pronouncing this uh incorrectly is it Rastavec yeah Rastavec Rastavec yeah um, and and so for those of you that don't know, a is, is is a it's a practice that falls under uh, the international guidelines of of modern day slavery and and child trafficking, um, and so that he had to deal with that. And now today we're going to talk about his journey as a child all the way up through uh, through his life now, and 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 talking about how he just came to be the person that he is today. So Cass, thank you again for sitting with me, my friend. Yeah, thank you for having me again. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to I want to dive right into this because this is so crazy. You know what kind of happened? Um, first and foremost, let me just tell people how you and I met because because it's just crazy. Yeah, <laughs> so so um, I don't normally do like on TikTok. There's these things called um, like like battles, right? Where you can like battle people and and all of that. And I don't normally do battles, but right. I decided that I was going to do a battle one night. And one of the people that I that requested to do a battle with me was Cass. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Let's let's just do it. And then we ended up just sitting there talking about just life. And I was like, wait, this is like the coolest person <laughs> ever. <laughs> and I'm so happy that I got to bump into you that night. <laughs> I was surprised. I I thought the same thing. I thought, well, maybe he just wants to, you know, battle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to talk. Like most of the time, I just want to like just talk to people. Um, but most of the time, people just want to battle, which is fine. It's just like I'm like I don't mind battling. I'm like I just want to like talk. <laughs> you you want it to be like interesting, like mm -hmm. you want it, an interesting conversation out of it. You mm -hmm. you know, and like what got my eyes was that you and I, we were telling our stories and I was not expecting that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was, it was such a cool, like, it was such a cool moment. Uh, and it's actually really nice because for those of you that don't know, um, when you, after the, after about 10 o'clock PM, <laughs> TikTok battles get weird. Like there's a lot of weird people <laughs> on there. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being a, nothing wrong with being weird <laughs> right right but like like there were some like like after after i had battled you that day um i battled a couple other people and let me tell you it was the most absurd ridiculous battles i've had like there was one person that for five straight minutes they were just farting <laughs> as we we're battling that's all it was they just farted for five straight minutes uh-huh yep <laughs> Yep. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? <laughs> oh my God. But, but, but we got to, like you said, we got to like talking and, and I got to hear your story and I want, I want, and I wanted people to hear your story. So let's start at the beginning here back to, to, I guess, to whatever you can remember. Um, what was life for like for you growing up in, in Haiti from what you remember? my my life in haiti was a struggle growing up i went through sickness i was not getting like food i was um homeless and the other thing was that you know i was i was just out here not even you know knowing who my family was and i was not even like born in a in a hospital you know yeah so that made made like life hard on me and it's a third world country honestly the opportunity was not there for me and then 
one day I would just living in the in the streets with my brother. And then after that, I didn't know what was about to happen. I just got captured in the um, child, child slavery. And after that, they, they like forced me to work, like work I didn't want to do. And at the time I was like, I was like about three years old and who who in the world would make a three-year-old do the things like that when they're still learning about the world and you know they're you know they're not even like developed yet mm-hmm. so that was the struggle I was going through yeah so with that I was like working doing things like errands I was like a I was like a kitchen slave. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. And um, the thing was, they say the rest of it is supposed to be family given, given um, a person, their kids, or another person to uh, like a stranger or another family, but. They don't know what what are some of the consequences out there out there you know like some of some of the consequences are like they don't really get the education like they should um they don't always get fed wow and they're they're not always getting the the nicest people out there so it was a struggle with that. And then I I got branded on my left arm right here. It's mm-hmm. a, a spot. I don't know how good you can see it, but yeah, that's where it is. And it was the name of the slave owner. Wow. And like if you didn't listen to that person, you'd get beat be and you know things like that happened to many people that went through that struggle and I was one of the people that experienced that that's crazy like and and how scared were you you know as this was going on like how like how did you just get through the day because I would imagine you would just be frightened like to, to to go through this every day how scared were you I was honestly, I didn't understand at the time because, because I was like really little, but I was, I was scared because I was, um, I was not where I was supposed to be. And honestly, I didn't even know where I was. I, I didn't even know that was, um, that was my life at first. And thankfully though, a missionary who was a lady rescued me from that situation. And after that, the brand got off of my arm right here. And um, they like they like covered that mm-hmm. thing. So they would not see the name of the person oh. who owned me. So, um, so yeah, that and then after that, the missionary paid sixty bucks to get me out. I don't know how she she wow. did all that, <laughs> <laughs> but like I would imagine when. What, do you remember how you felt when you found out? that you were being, I guess, taken out of that situation. Do you remember how you felt when you when you finally learned that you're not gonna have to do that work anymore and be, you know, in that slave, in that slave trade? Um I think I think at the time um I was still like scared because you know I was 
I was supposed to be like sold again to mm. another slavery. So I didn't know what was about to happen because she, she got me for 60 bucks and I thought, uh, and I was thinking, oh, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. So I had mm -hmm. no idea what was about to happen. Yeah. Thankfully, she did that and um, she put me in an orphanage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was that was better, but I still struggle. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting beat or uh, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. but we were still still struggling to get food, and right. there right. were many kids to like um, feed. There were many kids to take care of, and honestly. I don't know if I would have lived in that situation either because I was not getting what I needed, just like in the child slavery. Mm -hmm. That's that's so scary. And and so in in addition to what you were going through there, um, were you also at the time, you know, hearing impaired, um, or did that happen later? Uh yes, mm -hmm. yeah. We. We, me and my family, adopted family, we don't know what happened to my hearing. It's either, it's either I was born with it because my, my other family was, which is my um, biological family mm -hmm. was sick and going through the same struggle as me and Haiti or or it could have been that I was born hearing and then I went through the sickness and you know lost lost all, all my hearing so mm -hmm. I lost I meant lost some of it not all of it but right I can still I can still hear people, hear people, but um, at the same time, it can be like a struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you, so not only um, are you hearing impaired, but English isn't your first language. So how difficult was it for you to communicate your needs and, and, and your wants and your feelings to other people? Mm -hmm. Um, it was hard at first communicating with people in English was not easy. So after after being adopted, there were many things I struggled with. Playing with other kids, school, um, relationship with people, talking all of those things I struggled with. Yeah, when, when you were young, I guess, how aware of you were that all of this was kind of like happening? Like, like is it one of those things that you, like as you got older, you realized, you know, more of what was actually happening or did you, really kind of know what was going on in the moment? I mean, it took me, it took me a long time to understand what was happening in this world. Um, honestly, it was just that I, you know, I didn't know much because of those struggles I went through. And, you know, I didn't think I could do many, many things because of those struggles. So yeah, it, it was it was a struggle just like trying to get into the American culture, mm -hmm. learning about the opportunities that I have in life. I mean, I did things you you know that you would not 
normally do. And I got some um, funny stories. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you, I remember you were, you were mentioning that you and your brother were caught. Do, do you know what, like, where's your brother now? Do you know? Uh, my brother, he's still in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't know our parents. Mm -hmm. Both, both of them are dead though. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I think he, he knows my parents more than I do, but mm -hmm. I don't know my parents at all. Yeah. Yeah. Would you ever, would you ever go back to Haiti? Or have you been? I have not been back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have not been back since 2005. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was, I was adopted. Yeah. Yeah. Would would you ever go back? Um I'd yeah, I would I would go back just to like help Haiti mm -hmm. and try to influence more people that they can do it in life, you know. Um mm -hmm. that that's why I have this um shirt on that yeah. to survive and thrive. Right here. Yeah. I love that. Yep. I love that business so mm -hmm. i have that to like tell people you can do it right right that's some it's, it's it's fascinating because like i think a lot of times people take things for granted um growing up you know in an area of privilege you know like like for me like i grew up in an area of, of privilege where I didn't have to deal with anything, you know, mm -hmm. even remotely close to that. And I hear stories like this and it really puts things into perspective um, by realizing it's like, man, there are, there are some crazy things happening out there in the world uh, that are still happening to this day. Um, and, and there are survivors, there are people surviving, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, are trying to survive these horrific conditions. And it, it made you who you are today. And I, I wanna talk about, you know, your like the adoption process. So like, so you got sent to the orphanage and then you got adopted, right, from there? Yeah. And what was, what was that process like for you? Um, at the time, I didn't know I was adopted. Yeah. And I didn't even know that it was like white people. <laughs> yeah. I was like um, confused at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like the adoption took a long time for my parents, adoptive parents, because they had to do so many things like mm -hmm. um, paperwork. Mm -hmm. they had to try to find like a interpreter because I didn't speak English. Mm -hmm. They had to try to find like a, like a body guard mm -hmm. and a taxi driver too. Mm -hmm. so, it, it was a hard, it was yeah. a hard time. Yeah. Do you remember when you first came to the United States? Yes. And <laughs> that's my money going <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Um, me coming in the, the U.S., it was, it was still a struggle. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> so the first time I got here, it was... Um, Miami, mm. Florida. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my first food was pizza. Oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's my favorite. That's that's my second favorite food. I like pasta and I like pizza. Well, I don't real really eat it. Yeah, I don't really eat it because yeah. lactose intolerance. Ah, uh, <laughs> right, right. Anyway, so so yeah, that was my first food. Uh huh. As a starving kid, I ate like a full box of 
peed, so <laughs> I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And and that's that's and I could I would imagine like it was just kind of if anything was like was there like a big culture shock too when you got here? You're just like looking around, and be like, what is happening in this world? Yes, what is happening? And the other thing that I did was so I didn't know about the about the like going going to the bathroom mm -hmm. I thought I thought you, you know I I can just go mm -hmm. anywhere I wanted to go mm -hmm. to the bathroom and I went to pee in a planter <laughs> did they stop you they're like wait no 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 don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> my, my parent my adoptive parents they they were both like looking looking they said where's cast <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> oh man said oh there's that kid now, now we see him and, they, and they're like oh no <laughs> to teach this kid how to use the bathroom. <laughs> yeah yeah how old were you at this point um i was about six at the time six, seven. yeah six. yeah so, I didn't understand. It's because in Haiti we were so so used to going out outside mm -hmm. the bathroom and doing not really toilets to use. Right. So that's what I use outside. <laughs> and and so so you get here to the United States. You um you have um this this white family with the mom and a dad and, and mm -hmm. two two sisters am i correct yeah yes mm -hmm. and two sisters um what what was that what was that like for you like as as you were as you were growing older and starting to realize sort of what was kind of i guess going on um what was life for you like growing up in the united states with a white family knowing that i guess you weren't you didn't look like them. You're not from the area that they were from. You know, what was that realization like? So, what it was like um, before, you know, I like noticed things. I we flew back to Ohio, where I am, um, Sandusky, Ohio, home of Cedar Point, baby, home yes. of Cedar Point. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. and. I still had more struggle with life. This time, another funny story was um, cheese, cheese. <laughs> I thought cheese was so good. Yeah. That one night I decided to get out of my room and we had a like a block <laughs> full of it. And I I ate all of it, and the next day I was not feeling good. And oh, no, <laughs> did you learn, uh -huh. did you learn your lesson? And sure enough, I did because the next day I couldn't go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what is happening to my body right now? <laughs> but anyway, life growing up with a white family. They were, they are great people. They gave me so much um, opportunity and they want me to be the best that, that I can be. But the problem was that I was still struggling with mm -hmm. like um, with America. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that was my, like my family. I thought, oh, well, maybe I, maybe I will go back to Haiti. Mm -hmm. And and then I question, why don't we have the same skin color? And my, my parents told me, you're adopted. I didn't know what, what <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. that. and yeah, that, and my both of my sisters are like 
almost about 10 years old, older than I am. So, so it was like, I didn't really like get to see him all the time. Because, um, after like high school, they both went to college mm -hmm. and I was like still in middle school, elementary school, high right. school. So, but other than that, we are fine with each other. We, um, we are positive people. Mm -hmm. And growing up, I had problems with like my speech, mm -hmm. hearing, and many other other things in life. So I had to try to get used to the American culture mm -hmm. and make the best of it. Right. Do, when did you when did you learn sign language? Um, I learned sign language uh, about yeah 20, 2019. It was the fall. Fall of twenty nineteen. So, yeah. So it's when I I got in the Gallaudet. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That, and um, before that, I never knew what sign language mm -hmm. was. Right. Um, was it hard? Was it hard for you to learn? Yes, it, it was hard because me, I have a learning disability. Um, also, mm -hmm. I have um, PTSD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is hearing loss. So it was a struggle growing up and um, my parents both found out I was hard of hearing um, when I was really little. So, yeah. so then at the time we checked my ears, both of them, and um, I had loss in both ears. Mm -hmm. So that's when we knew I needed hearing aids. Yeah. And, um, but but it was like like not that bad mm -hmm. as I thankfully I can still I can still hear people. Mm -hmm. It right. just like I can't hear like the more it's more like I'm not as good as hearing the high pitch mm -hmm. and um like little sounds. Mm -hmm. Right, right. What, so, so I, what I want to, one of the biggest things that you discovered for yourself was football, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you discovered football. Uh, when did that happen? When did you, when did you discover football and, and when did you decide that that was something that you wanted to pursue? Um, my family, they're big, big Michigan fans. Yeah. <laughs> Michigan or Michigan State? Michigan, Michigan. Yeah, I always want to make sure I clarify. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes, because they graduated from Michigan. Mm -hmm. My um, grandparents graduated from Michigan. Mm -hmm. Aunts, uncles, um, cousins, and friends, they all graduated from there. So I always had had a dream of going there, but you you know, my parents always told me, I don't care where you go, mm -hmm. as long as it's not Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be very very upset with me right now. Uh -huh. I am, I am a Ohio State Buckeye fan. I am. I'm so sorry. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. See that before? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it, it took about ten years for Michigan to win a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm a I'm a big I'm a big Ohio State fan. So don't hate me. Okay. <laughs> as long as you're a good person, I am. I I promise. That. <laughs> so that that really got me into mm -hmm. football. We we watch a, a lot of 
sports. We like it. Um, at first, I didn't because I didn't understand it. <laughs> and right, right. Where the other stories come in. Um, my first sports was soccer. Mm -hmm. I I tackled people. <laughs> 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 that was football. Oh no. <laughs> um, I also did did wrestling. Mm -hmm. I did um baseball. I tackled people in that. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> you're like, no, you're not supposed to tackle. Stop. No, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. I, tried, I tried basketball. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I didn't really like those sports. I mean, I like basketball, but I just didn't care for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then fifth grade, I found foot. I found football mm -hmm. and um, my first practice, I didn't make it because I was sick before we went to oh, practice. Oh no. And mm -hmm. I, was, I was really sad because, because I was looking forward to it because it was not flag football. Mm -hmm. So I was looking forward to it Yeah, and I was sick so then I had to wait till like the next day and I came back and I was really excited. Yeah. And practice was fun and all that. I didn't really understand the rules, but mm -hmm. first game, I um I was not running back yet. I was uh, playing O line mm -hmm. and linebacker. And at the time, my dad said, last play of the game, just run the just run the ball. I don't care what you do, just yeah. run the ball. And so I I ran the ball ball and got the game winning touchdown. Yes. That's when when I felt like um football was for me yeah. and um, I've made many connections throughout the sport and I've met many people and that's how Gallaudet found me. That's amazing. And and so you started, you know, really taking it seriously and being like, I want to, I want to play football. And so where, where do you stand now with football? Like where, where, where do you want, where, how do you, where do you want it to take you now? Um, well, right now I'm a, like a red shirt. A red shirt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I would, I would love to continue playing the game. Mm hmm what what I want football to do for me is to help me continue to inspire those people that don't think they can do it in their life. So that's what I want to do. And that's also why I use TikTok um, and other social media it it really helped me. it really really helped me um, yeah. the best out of me yeah and i'm glad i'm glad you brought that up because uh you you have grown a lot on on mm -hmm. tiktok and you have close to 200,000 you know followers now on on tiktok and and that must be so crazy right like what is, what is it like to know that you have just like people that just in, like that that follow you that enjoy your work that enjoy hearing from you and all of that what's that like it's crazy. It's a crazy <laughs> world we live in, especially the connection mm -hmm. that's being made. Um, <laughs> honestly, at first, TikTok I thought was a joke. Thought, <laughs> you know what? I'm not gonna make a TikTok. I will <laughs> never make one. <laughs> what happened? Well, we were we were sent, we were sent home. Yeah. from my school and um told that we couldn't come back 
we had to wait because of COVID mm. in 2020. Got home two weeks into that. I um I was doing classes online and just working out. That's mm. all I was doing. And after that, the third week, still doing the same thing. I couldn't even go to my gym. So and I decided, you know what? I hate to say this. Why don't I try TikToks? See what it does for me. <laughs> and then I told myself, I said to myself, listen, Cass, you're only going to have this thing for it about maybe a year and the, or a month and then you're finished with that <laughs> nope no. i was <laughs> it's there it's there now it's part of your life my friend like it's all there <laughs> so i started like making some video okay video but what what really got people's eyes was when when i started telling my story i talked about i talked about my adopted family mm -hmm. family i met family and um and people thought that was interesting right i don't, I don't know why yeah because it's and, a fascinating story that's why <laughs> and you know they said that's so cool and that video ended up getting getting like 11 million views mm -hmm. and so that's when i decided maybe tiktok is not so bad <laughs> and now you get to and now you get to tell your story the way that you want to tell it um and people get to get to listen to it and 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 join you on this journey um which is amazing and and you know i gotta ask you one of the things you talk about a lot on your tiktok is that damn soap that that's, <laughs> <laughs> people people are fascinated people are fascinated with that soap they want to know if you're eating it they want to know what you're doing with it they want to know if it's chocolate they want to know all of it and you just kind of go with it <laughs> yeah the the thing about about that is that when I, when I first got here i thought soap was food all right <laughs> I ate it as a little kid and my my mom saw it and said, Why are you eating soap? And I told her I thought it was food. Oh no. <laughs> and then the other the other thing was um my dorm room. Mm -hmm. It has brick walls. You you know how um prison has brick mm -hmm. walls like that? Yeah. And I have you know the the white beaters on when I go on live. <laughs> right, right. Oh, he's in jail. <laughs> then... <laughs> I don't like he's TikTok. He's TikTok and live from jail right now. <laughs> yeah. And then I got out the soap one day, and they said, "Drop the soap." <laughs> <I'm> like, <"What?" laughs> eat the soap oh my god <laughs> I'm like what is happening here and yeah so i just started you know going going along with that and yeah. started laughing and making making jokes with my um soap <laughs> and, and it's That's not amazing. it's not to the people it's not to people in jail mm -hmm. it's just me right I'm making fun of in front mm. of myself right right yeah, i think it's hilarious <laughs> i think it's so funny like just like people because like you'll like people will comment and then you'll just take their comment and you'll just run with it and i love it <laughs> yeah i love it like honestly i'm i'm so i'm so happy that that our paths have have crossed um and it, it's it's just so crazy that the because of tiktok and because of the internet um we're able to just connect 
so easily and find new friends uh, that we probably would not have met right. at all. And you and I just happened to meet by chance <laughs> one night. Um, and now, and now here we are, you know, um, and I, I get to listen to your story and, and, and hear and, and have people, you know, uh, understand your story and where you come from as well. If my last question to you is this, there might be somebody listening to this right now that is, you know, maybe they're in a situation in which they're scared or they can't find their footing or they don't know, you know, what's going to happen next in their life or, or whatever it may be. If you could give them any words of encouragement right now, what would you say? From, from my struggle in life, I'd just tell them, survive and thrive. That's, that's what I would tell them. Um, it, it means you, you can get through the thing that you're struggling with. Um, you need to continue continue don't stop now and i always tell people you know um it's okay to be weird be be yourself don't allow anyone to tell you what you can and can't do and you know many of my friends family thinks i'm weird but I don't care. I have fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> weird is good. I'm I'm weird too, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> my my biggest fear fear is that I if I'm normal, then no one will will understand me. This so I want to be weird. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. That's the best thing, my friend. I'm so like this, 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 I was look. I've been looking forward to sitting and, and chatting with you for the longest time. And now it's actually happened. Like it, like it, it's, and I know that the people that were in our lives that day are going to be so happy that this, that this actually happened, <laughs> that we actually like, we, we came through with it and all of that. Uh, Cass, honestly, thank you so much for, for sitting with me today. I'm so happy that our paths cross. Uh, and this will not be the last time, my friend, we're officially friends now. So like, you can't get rid of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to take you on in a foot race. I want to race you. That's what I want to do. I bet, bet. <laughs> I'll, I'll lose. I'll lose, but I'll give a valiant effort. I'm going to try. <laughs> Did you play any sports back in your day, too? Yeah, I played basketball. I played. I played basketball from uh, gosh, from elementary school until my junior year of high school. Uh, I played baseball up until my sophomore year of high school. Um, and I played football for one year and I sucked. And I'm like, never again. <laughs> hey, one year, you didn't, you didn't like give it a try. I got hit once, Cass. I got hit once. And I'm like, nope, I'm done. I'm not doing this. <laughs> but, but, but you have, you have to like trust the process you mm -hmm. have to try to keep improving i was scared Cass. i was so scared man i got hit once and i was like i don't know if i want to get hit again <laughs> hey, hey, hey i i agree with you yeah if you if you um if you really love football mm -hmm. go for it if you don't or it or you're questioning mm -hmm. yourself don't don't do it because you can get hurt and mm -hmm. you don't want that. And honestly, college football, it, it, it can be a struggle. Mm -hmm. And rather you go D1, D2, D, um, D3, NAIA, mm -hmm. JUCO, it's all a struggle. And everyone has, has some type of a struggle they're going through and mm -hmm. it's all in the head so yeah that's the thing you know I try to continue to work on every right. day right well I'm going to be cheering for I'm going to be cheering for uh, for you from the sidelines my friend I'll be nice and safe in my in my comfortable seat on the sidelines cheering you on don't pull a hammy. <laughs> no, I might. I'm old. I might. You never know. If I sleep the wrong way, my I, my body is just screwed. So, <laughs> uh, honestly, Cass, thank you so much for for sitting with me, my friends. If you want 
um, to, to hear more of Cass's story. I have um, his social media links uh, down at the bottom of, of the description of this podcast. Uh, so go follow him. I promise you, you're not going to regret it. This is a good man over here. He's a good man over here. And I say so. I wouldn't lie to you, my friends. I wouldn't lie to you. Uh, thank you, Cass. Thank you again for sitting with me. And to everybody listening, thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate it. As always, God bless and good vibes. Bye.